What if you could experience being in a virtual world, but being your pet? Video games are an entertainment medium, and by that, most of them are able to grab you inside and experience the game world as whatever thing you are, with the greatest innovation games provide being playing a second. Today we're going to look deep into animals being sucked into the video games, and how they've also invaded my home because they have done But first we must ask ourselves, where did animals even come from? Well, I don't know, I'm not here, Zoo. When I was young, like many people, I had pets. Like many people, however, I was never young, my life has been an end. Jokes aside, I used to have like a ton of pets, and a lot of them came and went, but one animal pet I've always had has been cats. And so when Stray exploded in popularity a bit ago, I knew I had an opportunity to profit under the disguise of game design analysis. At this point, Stray barely needs an introduction. It's a cat game where you avoid Hawaiian pizza goo and the sun is dead, which has unironically become the standard for storylines in modern games. Where Stray makes up for basically being just a generic action-adventure game and not much else though, is in the surprisingly high detailed cat experience. The developers of Stray, the 12, are very dedicated cat owners who brought their cats to work so they could analyze how cats tend to be cute by being absolute annoying pieces of death in Stray. One of the things that the developers analyze is this. For some odd biological reason that I won't go into because I hate behavior and that's a biological fact, the ass of cats tend to have a glow to them at times. I don't know why it happens, again I hate biology. What I don't hate, however, is that something as small as this was implemented into Stray. This is a type of attention to detail that is present throughout the entirety of Stray. Cat owners like me when I was non young can appreciate it. Neat little touch. I understand people can be afraid of meow machines, and so there are games on the other side of the spectrum, where instead of the game being cat is put into video game, it's more of Yo, new dog just dropped! Nintendox is we interrupt the segment of your daily Philly baby does it leave with a segue interrupted by this interruption to bring you a frog clicker, the most epic of epsiest clicking of frogs. You can click the frog, and then click it again! Go play Frog Clicker, do it. Speaking in non-ironic 90s commercial, I actually think Frog Clicker is quite a great example of games like Stray. Unlike Stray, it's literally just yet another clicker game with level ups and not much else. But like Stray, it's filled with tons of charm and love put into it and the main character is a cute animal. Sometimes it rains, the music in the background is incredibly relaxing and those sounds! In 2014, one of the most famous games ever with an animal as a protagonist was released. So Goat Simulator is literally just what if we made Tony Skateboard Ragdoll Goat and it somehow exploded into popularity. I think we need to investigate. I only analyzed big known games in this video this time, although I did want to explore Paul just nail a bit for <coughs> digital numbers on the screen, <laughs> but it was mainly to answer the question. Why are animals becoming the protagonists of a whole lot of video games? Why are they invading our video games? I think it's because of something called relatability. If you've ever looked at how to do X videos with YouTube, meme or game development videos, the word relatable is probably ingrained deep in your brain. All of these video games, they're good, like really good. But a lot of people probably only realize that because of the haha funny dog goes spleet. 